Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Movies You Can Learn From. And this is about the movie, actually, TV serial called uh, Jaguar, which is a Spanish TV serial. There are the players. It's a team of five, and they're Nazi hunters in Spain uh, in 1962 looking for some designated Nazis who fled from Germany to Spain after the war. It's a very interesting serial for many, many reasons. George, welcome to the show, George. Um, why don't you give the environment of this uh, series? What are we talking about here? She said uh, 1962 in Spain, and this is depicting a, a, a unit of former prisoners at the Mount Susan uh, concentration camp in Austria where the Spanish uh, Republicans who were against Franco had been sent and were tortured and killed and, you know, at that camp. So these are survivors who have come and they're seeking these former these Nazis who have been sent, come to Spain, that are being protected by the Franco government. And they're living normal lives, you know. They're even open to who they are, you know. They're not concealed in any way, and they they want to take them to be in a court of law, international court of law, to be brought to justice for what they did, you know, uh, in the Third Reich. And that's the gist of it. You've got a, about five or, or four men um, that former, you know, were, no, three were formerly in the concentration camp, and one of them was the son of a of a constant person who was taken. And, and murdered in the concentration team. And lo and behold, there's this single agent woman who, who her, she saw her father shot in, in Germany in the, in the camp. And she's out to kill um, Otto Bachmann. Bachmann. In, in the series, he's called Bachmann, but it's actually a takeoff on another name, German That's name. Exactly. On a real character who really did do those things yes. for the SS, precisely. And uh, she's she wants to kill him. She's she's plotting to kill, in some way, poison him or shoot him. Uh, and the these other four realize that she's she's doing this, and they don't want to kill this guy. They want to take him to court and bring him to justice, which is pretty pretty smart, you know, because. If you kill him, that's the end of it, you know. But if you bring him to court, you know. But there's one other element there. They want to use him as bait for the butcher of Mauthausen, um, which is uh, where he worked. His name was uh, I... doc the Dr. Death. And it was really his name. This, there's no change in the name for this character. Um, and... Um, they figure that through Bachman they will they will get hold of Doctor Death. Exactly. So um, they they're able to stop her from from killing uh, um, Bach, Bachman, and then they trap her and they tell her, "What are you up to? What are you? Or what are you know? What are you up to?" And she says, "I want to." She actually saw Bachman kill her father, and then we learn later that. She, Instead of killing her, she's just a little girl. They made her a servant in the Nazi camp or something, you know, the, the, the Nazi uh, housing, you know, the mansion they were living in. So, so um, she, they get her, they convince her slowly to join them rather than doing what she wanted to do, you know, just go kill because I, you know, that, that sort of ends it. So, so they can bring them to judge. They want to bring this. Dr. Death to Justice. So the whole six episodes pretty much goes from there. The first two episodes are really, really good. At the last, the two after, the, two, the first three maybe, and the, the, the fourth and the fifth, too much gunning, shooting, not really that much plot, just a lot of minutes of shooting. And then the sixth episode, really profound, where she's actually in this um, lighthouse or something, and she's facing Dr. Heim. You know, the, Dr. Dr. Jess, his Dr. name is uh, Arabert Heim, and he's a real person. 
He really was doctored death at Mauthausen, uh, or Goosen, you know, which is the subcamp to Mauthausen. And um, um, uh, okay, so he's there, and we have her in that episode with him in this old lighthouse firm. And she's, he's actually, she's confronting him about what he did. And he's completely not remorseful at all. He says that he was helping science, and then he's trying to get her to go cuckoo. So she does something crazy so he can release himself. And, and he talks about her brother, 15-year-old brother, that he actually skinned him alive. And the Spaniards, they held out the longest, that her brother was the one who held out the longest, being tortured and being skinned alive, and he never broke, right? So, so this is pretty much near the end. And then they show uh, Lucera, who was the leader of this pack, being electrocuted. But he didn't die. I mean, some of the reviewers said he died. But no, at the last moment, they show him moving his hands. Now, the one last thing before I, I give it back to you, Jay, there was supposed to be a season two, but it was decided not to. And even though it was really liked, disliked in Spain, was very well watched. I guess the United States, people got tired of because the, the episodes petered out until episode six. So there was no season two. So this is how it ends with Lucero, who's the leader of this little group, uh, coming back to life after being electrocuted by Bachman. So I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Jay. Maybe you could fill in some more things that I'm missing. Yeah, I think um, you gotta you got to go into it with a certain grain of salt. This is a pretty dramatic and violent uh, series. Um, and um, it didn't get good reviews by the Spanish reviewers. Um, every, every character is Spanish except the, the Germans. The Germans, uh, the, the names of the players who played the Germans are all German names. And indeed, they speak German. Uh, so, the, the, you know, the, the series is in Spanish, translated to English, and German, translated to English. And I find that interesting. And it, you know, it's hard to get a handle on why the reviewers in Spain um, didn't really like it that much. I think it's probably because there's two things. One is because it was a copy of um, an American uh, melodramatic, melodramatic, um, you know, uh, series. Um, and they really have had enough of that. Um, but the other uh, was that I, I think, you know, <clears throat> the whole Nazi story in Spain is not known to the Spanish people. It's very interesting how history has covered it over, like the Red Sea. Now, I don't think they want to hear about it. And likewise, they don't want to hear about the Holocaust because there's a certain, you know, thread in, in Spanish culture that still lives in the Inquisition in the 15th century. Um, so they don't really care too much about, about the Nazis. Um, and uh, about about the prison camps, the death camps, and the Holocaust. But, but you know, to me, this is really interesting because, and, and the write-ups all say that um, uh, this is something the Spanish people do not know about, but should know about, because there were tens of thousands of Spaniards who fought against Franco in the uh, Spanish Civil War from. 1936 to 1939, and Franco won that. And he, he captured a lot of his adversary, Republicans, they call them, um, and he didn't know what to do with them. So he made a deal with Hitler, who was his friend, um, to give these prisoners, these Republican Spaniards, um, to Hitler to be incarcerated and tortured and killed in, in, in prison camps and death camps that Hitler had organized for the Holocaust. And uh, most of them went to Mauthausen. And so there were, you know, uh, repeated references to um, the fact that the, our team here, our Nazi hunter team, um, had connections with Mauthausen where the Nazis were killing Spaniards. And they were Catholic Spaniards. They weren't Jewish or anything. And I don't think they were gypsies. They didn't fall in the normal patterns of the Holocaust, they were just, uh, they were Franco um, Republican 
anti-Franco Republican Spaniard. And it is unknown to the Spanish people. It was unknown to me. I didn't know that. And the, and the movie, the series, um, shows you this group of people who were all associated one way or the other, personally or through family, um, with what the, the, the goings on in Mauthausen and came back to hunt Nazis. Now, that part, according to what I've read, that part isn't true. There were no Nazi hunters in Spain in 1962, but there were Nazis in Spain in 1962, which was, what, 20 years after the war. And, and um, so what you get is a, um, a docudrama um, with only half the story. The Nazis were there, and they, as you said, they were protected um, by uh, Franco, and they were given um, many benefits. Some of them, like Bachman, who, as I said, Bachman was his name. Otto Bachman is his uh, stage name here. Uh, Otto Bachman made a lot of money courtesy uh, Franco. Franco connected him to deals, and uh, he made a lot of money there. He was a real person, but not his real name. But um, And so, you know, it was a soft landing for the Germans, the Nazis, who had to find a, a, a place that was somewhat sympathetic to them, and Spain was sympathetic. Remember that Franco stayed in charge in, in a sort of an autocratic leader of Spain until from 1939 when he won the Civil War, and he was very brutal in the Civil War against his own people, against the Spaniards, uh, until 1975. That's a long time. From 39 to 75, he ruled. And he was certainly in charge in 1962 when he was giving the Nazis a good time in Madrid. Um, so this is really sort of um, it's an imagined Nazi hunter team dealing with real Nazis. Um, and it's, for that reason, it's, um, it is very provocative on a, on a historical level. And um, for me, I was uh, I was really interested to find out that this was going on and how brutal the Nazis were in Spain, a sympathetic country to them, uh, and how much trouble it was to try to um, tie them down. Um, the doctor of death, Doctor Death, the Arab at time, a real person. That's his real name. He really was a real badass in in uh, in that thousand. Um, skinning people and torturing them and injecting them with various, uh, you know, um, noxious uh, chemicals and fluids to see how long they would last, how much pain was, what kind of a doctor is this? Um, this this guy escaped. You know, however the series ended, the fact is that he escaped. He went to North Africa. Somehow somebody got him out of there. We don't know. And people were supporting the Nazi expatriates. They were giving them money. Um, and he wound up in Egypt, changed his name to an Egyptian name. Uh, he became a, a Muslim and disappeared into the woodwork. He may be alive today. And he is definitely a war criminal. So this is really a whole war crime story um, that was not followed. Nobody did anything about it because they had a soft landing in Spain because they could escape Spain and go elsewhere. And, um, you know, the American, uh, you know, war criminal trials didn't reach them. So that's why the movie was very interesting to me. The small, you know, the bottom line on that is that we knew that there were death camps all over Europe, hundreds of them. You know, the Nazis had a very organized, large-scale extermination, industrial-level um, program all over every country that they occupied or, or which was friendly to Hitler had, had death camps in it. Um, I'm afraid I don't think that Spain did. In, in, in the case of Spain, they sent their Republican adversaries to Austria instead, Mauthausen. But so we knew that there were a lot of prison camps, death camps. What we didn't know 
um, was that this Holocaust and these camps affected lots of other countries, lots of other people. France was involved in, in spiriting, you know, the Vichy government was involved in spiriting these Spanish prisoners into Austria. So there was a kind of collaboration. They were collaborators in the French use of the term. Um, and, and so, you know, you have to see Europe during the war as completely rife with these camps and with collaborators who helped Hitler uh, move people in and out of these camps and kill people. It was not as simple, maybe, as the media have told us. It was all over the place. And every country somehow was involved. That's why the movie is so interesting. There are some of the scenes, you know, the, the, as I was alluding to the last episode six, there's some really profound scenes. Um, as I was saying, that the interaction between Dr. Heim and Isabel really. There is a lot of other side plots there. Um, it seems that the young kid, Castro, he had, while they were meeting, he was leaving, you know, and, and exposing them potentially, you know, because they could have been under danger, you know, because they were obviously in Franco's uh, vein and, you know, being, everybody's being watched, you know, you know, all these soldiers walking around. So uh, there was that subplot. And then, and then also they show her as a little girl uh, when she was a server of, of these uh, Nazis. So she remembered Bachman's scar and she remembered Dr. Hein's scar, but she wasn't really sure because Dr. Hein had grown a beard if that was really him, because of course, 20 years later, she's in English, right? So then she gets to the point where she shaves, right? And she gets rid of that side of her, his face, you know, her hair. And then she knows it's him. But he's still denying he's saying he's someone else, you know, French name, Le Grand or something, oh, it's a Spanish name, you know? So he, he's in complete denial. And as you said, they, then he got to Egypt, maybe in real life, right? And she, uh, disappeared, just like in South America, so many of these other Nazis disappeared and lived a normal lifespan, you know? Some of them in luxury, you know, in Spain and South America, which is really sad if you think about it, that, that after they did such horrible things that they were able to escape and get away with. So, uh, yeah, as not only that they could lead normal lives, they could lead normal Nazi lives. They they said this restaurant was called Haus H A U S, which is um, a German word meaning house. This restaurant was the, the the venue for their regular meetings where they would celebrate Hitler, celebrate Nazism, sing Nazi songs to each other. Um, they were out in the open in Spain. They weren't even hiding. And, and they were capable of doing very bad things to anybody they felt um, was adverse to them or trying to hunt them. And that was one of the threads in, in the series. Don't mess with these people because they, they have impunity. Furthermore, they have impunity to act like Nazis. And they have impunity to use the law enforcement of Franco um, uh, to assist them. So it was really a bad time in the '60s. I, I didn't know that. I went to uh, I went to Spain for the first time, 1965, only a short time after the date this movie, this series is set. I had no clue, um, and I think most people in Spain had no clue. They wanted to forget the Spanish Civil War. It was a bad time, and people especially Franco, was very brutal. And um, they didn't like Franco, but they never spoke against him because he was still running things and he was an autocrat. It shows you what happens in a modern-day country where an autocrat is running everything. You can't speak against him 
And they were, you know, don't say anything. We don't, we never talk about Franco, that sort of thing. And I was there in 65 and that's what, that's what I saw. That's what they told me, the people I was with. So Spain is a, you know, a special place. And this sort of you know, takes, takes, takes the covering off it. And you can see it more clearly now through this uh, serial. And so I give credit. Then to come to find that there have been other movies made, George, I don't know if you noticed that, about the same subject. Um, some documentaries about the same subject, about the Spanish uh, Republicans who were taken away to the death camps, and a good number of them were killed in death camps, and uh, very resentful and all that. But hey, the Spaniards have been through a very brutal war, just a year or two before, 39. And so they were used, they were hardened by all of that. So I, it teaches you about Spain and the, and the Spanish character and the Spanish history, which leads you right up to current times. Do you feel that some of the historical inaccuracy, basically that there was no real group like that, that could never operate in, in Franco Spain, you know, like the group that just depicted, and then that this Dr. Death uh, Dr. Heim has actually escaped and gone to Egypt and disappeared. You know, when you see the end of these six episodes that I watched, you really don't know that they did that. Because, you know, if you don't understand that this is fictitious, you would think that, oh, they'll get him, you know, and they'll get him. But, you know, he was never brought just. Well, there's a lot of material that they didn't extend on and ended short. So many of these serials are not renewed, right? Um, the investors don't want to renew it. The producers, you know, don't want to do it again. So it stops short. I can't tell you how many I've seen where it stops nowhere, just nowhere. Um, there was one not too long ago called uh, uh, Lady Ambassador. Um, I don't know if you saw that, where you go through this really interesting experience of an American ambassador in Britain. And it ends with an explosion. That's it. You never find out what happened. And I don't know if it's going to be renewed or not. It's, it's kind of unfair. They suck you in for um, this, this, you know, multi-episodal episodal, uh, series, and then they stop it short, and they don't renew it. And that's what happened here. As I said, they didn't get great reviews, but they, they were playing on mostly uh, this actress called um, Bianca Juarez, who played the role of Isabel Garrido. What an interesting character that was. She was tough as nails. She was beautiful. Beautiful woman, <laughs> yes. They had, but she had this uh, persistent scar on her forehead where the Nazi, where the Nazi struck her with his gun. Um, and, uh, she was, she was an incredible character. And very athletic, you know. I don't know if you noticed, but when she was running away from people down the dark streets of Madrid, uh, she was really running fast. She's an athlete. The actress was an athlete. Come to find that she is one of the most popular uh, stars in in Spain. Spain, of course, has a you know a robust um, a TV and movie industry, and it, which continues to operate despite the screenwriters' strike going on in L.A. So we'll see more. We'll see more of European and Spanish movies now and, and TV serials like this. But uh, she had been in dozens of shows, and she's not that old, dozens of shows. She must be very popular. And she's very pretty, and she's a good actress and all that. She was the star. And the other... Um, uh, Lucena, Lucena, uh, played by Ar Ivan Marcos. Uh, I thought he was excellent playing the role he played. And in fact, the whole Hunter team was very excellent. Uh, they they played roles that you were fascinated to see what they did and how they um, you know interacted together. So uh, I, I I don't know about all of the uh, episodes because although I saw them all originally, I didn't look at all of them again. And maybe they weren't as good as the first few, but the first few really took your attention. Wow, I got to follow this. I got to see what she does. 
you see how impervious uh, she is and how she engages. And of course, there's, there's a, love, a love thing between uh, Bianca Suarez, that is Isabel Garita, and Ivan Marcos uh, Lucena, um, but it's just ever so nuanced. It's just the, the slightest kind of reaction shot with the camera, and you really can't tell that there's any kind of affection there, because they're, you know, they're Nazi hunters. They, they don't fool around. They're willing to give their lives at a moment's notice. So to the extent that he, he may touch her uh, or throw a glance, it's not enough to make a conclusion that they're, they're, they got something going. So you never actually see that ripen into a relationship. If it was an American series, you, you had to see romance. There would be romance. But there was no romance here. It was a matter of doing the job, however brutal the job was. Different. You know, and that's another reason I like these, um, you know, European uh, movies and, and series, because although they copy the American style, and this one successfully copied the American style, as far as I'm concerned, um, it's still different. It, the, the, way, the way it's, you know, produced and directed, the way the actors uh, deal with each other, it's different. And so it gives you a kind of a, a view into their different culture, which it's like going on a trip, isn't it, George? Yep. <laughs> you know, one of the things I was going to suggest is that if, if we can do one of the documentaries with all the historical accidents of what happened in Spain, uh, it would sort of be a sequel to this because as much as the acting was good, and the, you know everything was good about the film in terms of presentation. We really should get our public here to understand the reality of, of that this was a fantasy that they could not have operated because it was so tight, you know. In yeah, you're right. The reason there was no Nazi hunter organization is that they wouldn't have been found out and killed. That's why, in fact, there was no Nazi hunter organization. It wasn't, it wasn't worth the risk. And that's what happened in Vichy, France. All this, the resistance, all of them uh, were actually, you know, found out and killed, you know, while the Nazi, the Vichy government was still in power. So, yeah, interesting. I think that's a good idea, George, because, uh, you know, in my reading anyway, there were, a number of, um, there's been a lot written about this, so I don't think the average Spaniard on the street of Madrid knows about it. Certainly the average American doesn't know about it. I didn't know about it, but there's been plenty written about it, and there's been a bunch of documentaries made over it. I'm not sure you're going to find those documentaries on Netflix or Prime or, or any cable, you know, movie channel, but it's worth looking, and it's worth you know, using this Jaguar series as a kind of keyhole into that full area of uh, European history and trying to find out more. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's another way of looking at what the Germans did, another way of looking at how the Germans ran. Uh, it doesn't make you feel good about them. Um, and it doesn't make you feel good about Franco. Um, but, you know, we need to know more. It's, this is not what we've been brought up on. This is different. One last thing. The name Jaguar. Lucera was explaining to Isabel that it was from South America, from the native the Incas, I think, that there were two groups. The, the, the Jaguars was a lower level, and they were the ones who would die for, them, for their tribe, for their nation. But there was a higher level. I forgot the name that Lucera was saying that they, would, they were never touched. So the Jaguars were the ones who put their lives on the line for their nation for the justice. And that's where the title Jaguar is. It's, it's from native South American, you know, Incas or those, that group. Uh, who's the other one? Inca and uh, the other the other native, native American you know, tribes in South America. Lion. 
Yeah, you know, the lion, yeah, the lion. I think the lion and the jaguar. So they were the jaguars, and you know they're the ones who put their life on the line. That's how the title came from. So George, folding all that together, you know the the um, the, the power of these episodes, the power of the characters, the writing was really good, and um, and you know the the, the production values really good, um, but also considering that the Spanish reviewers didn't think too much for whatever their reasons. Um, and considering that, you know, the story ended short and did not cover what happened to Dr. Death in Egypt, I suppose, and it was not renewed for whatever their reason. Um, but also, you know, the whole Keel effect of looking at this series and realizing there's something more we need to know, something more we need to study. Uh, about the Spanish Civil War, about Franco's relationship with Hitler, about Mauthausen, and about life in Madrid in 1962. Um, you know, considering all of that, what what rating would you give this uh, series? You know, the first two episode were, episodes were rated by the public really high. You know, I don't know if it's the American public or... Spanish public I saw those ratings. It's well, not... you can give a bifurcated rating, George. Yeah, you can say that yeah. the first ones to be rated at this and the latter ones at that. What do you think? Yeah. The first two, or maybe part of the third, I would give it nine and a half minutes. Yeah. It's pretty good. The next two, four and five, I would give it maybe it. Seven and a half or an eight, because I really wasn't happy. A lot of shooting, very little plot. I mean, minute after minute, they're shooting each other with the Nazis. You know, and it gets a little old, you know. There's, there's, there's nothing to it. There's no substance to it. And then number six, I would give it a 10. You know? Oh, wow. <laughs> because the, 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 just the scenes between Isabel and, and, and Dr. Hine, which is so profound, you know, and I really touched me, you know, that when he was talking and then how he could blatantly lie, you know, totally lie. In, he's going to save his own skin, right? So that, I was getting that attend. That, 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 that last episode is really good. And it's sort of a crescendo. That's why if they, if, if that's, if the yeah, fourth, four and five had been as good as, six, maybe they would have had a second season. But the other thing is, because there was no second season, as you said, there were a lot of strings that are just left there, you know, didn't get anywhere. You know, there's a lot of things that were alluded to in this first few episodes, six episodes, that could have been carried into a second season, never got them. So you just left there hanging. Then uh, one thought about that is that just as in the U.S., the people who put the different episodes together it may not be the same. In other words, you could have episode one and two were written and directed by by one team, and then three and four by another team, and five by somebody else, and so forth. Um, I know I know that that happens in in U.S. serials. It's uh, disturbing because you have an uneven quality uh, as you go down through the, and so you're being cheated in a way because you know you expect there to be some kind of continuing value from one to two to three to four, but you don't, you don't find that. And it deteriorates. I can't tell you how many serials I've stopped watching because I, I realized that they weren't maintaining a consistency um, with the, what drew me in in the first place. But if I take the whole thing and try to apply one rating to it, um, and mind you, it's really important to me about you know the keyhole, looking through the keyhole, into history that you didn't know before, I would give everything a nine. I would balance it out at a nine. It's not exactly what you did, but uh, I feel that the uh, any kind of serial that teaches you something, any kind of movie that teaches you something ought to get credit for teaching you that. And this did teach me. So yes, we will try to find those other documentaries about this period in time in Spain. Um, and throughout Europe and see if we can examine it more from a 
maybe a more documentary point of view. Thank you very much, George, for this discussion. I'm so glad we were able to look at this critically and in detail and against the background of true history. And it's very valuable to us to have this experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joey. Very interesting. Opened my mind to some things I really didn't understand completely. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.